falling and falling and, and there's nothing to hold on to mm -hmm. only this time it was you instead of instead of me only it felt like me oh god i'm so scared it's all right darling i won't fall and you'll always have me to hold on to mm -hmm. what are you doing up oh i don't know i couldn't sleep I don't know why. I know why. What time is it? Late. What time do you leave? Early. Soon. Too soon. Would you like some coffee? Nope. Hot chocolate? <clears throat> is there anything you do want? Mm-hmm. 
well. Get dressed. I want to go for a swim. Oh, yes. I know. I didn't either. Oh, but I do love you. I've been keeping myself so busy, I haven't had time to think of you being gone. Until just now. And, and there's so little time left. Oh, darling, hold me. Hold me. It would be so bad if only we could have a baby. Oh, shh, shh. But you can never tell what might happen up there. And I do want to have your child just... Something thing. does happen. It won't. We're going to be fine, darling. Just fine. I didn't think I could take it seeing you go off on that thing, but I just can't seem to stay away. Hey, I understand. Are you all right? Yes, I'm fine. How about you? Oh, I'm all right. I still wish you wouldn't go. Look, everything will be all right when I get back. When you get back. If you get back. I'll get back. Oh, nobody can guarantee that, not even Lawson. I said I'll get back. And you always do exactly what you say you're going to do, don't you? Alice, why? Why now? Now of all times, why, huh? Because I can't stand it anymore, that's why. Honey, everything's gonna be all right after I get back from this job. Honest. When I get back, that'll be the end of it, okay? Oh, Nick. What am I going to do? I love you, but... Hmm. But I know there'll never be an end of it. There'll always be that one more place where nobody's ever been before. Till one day, it just won't come back. And that will be the end of it. Alice, listen to me. This is the last adventure. I promise. Truly, Nick. I promise. Oh, I need you. And I'll wait for you, but please don't be a hero. I have to go now. Alice, wish me luck. Good luck. And please come home. I love you. I love you.
Pacific Laser Communications and Green and Relays for Fort Green. Pass that on to S1. I will check the Sydney station, too. Right. They just started the final concom check. Good. I want another check on locks, pressure valves three and four. See that the medics are ready in 75 minutes. By the way, have the boys been picked up yet? Not yet, sir. We haven't located Grant. Oh? Well, see that they're here in 60 minutes and ready for the final checkup. Yes, sir. Bachelor just locks the front door and pays the rent for a year or so. Yeah, you nervous about today? No, not at all. I feel great. It'll be a bus ride. A bus ride. Yeah, well, you're the navigator, I'm the driver. And Nick's the passenger. Two years of training just so I can bring back a few rocks. Uh, but what rocks, my boy? What rocks, huh? Where's our geologist, anyway? Ready for your examination, boys? Yeah, where's Grant? He's already started. Well, let's go. Oh, oh, there you are. Hey, you finally made it, huh? After they finish this physical, I won't even be able to climb up the gantry. Well, enjoy it, boys. You last six hours on Earth. All right, Doc. <laughs> For a while, then. Yeah, we hope. This will be your job from now on. Any news about the Russians? They were to be in the headlines. Not necessarily. How could they just disappear like that? Well, maybe the Russians are keeping quiet about it. Yeah, they... Uh, a little trouble retaining contact with CONCOM 3. Try switching to the alternate channel. Right. Well, gentlemen, this is it. The day. How are they, Doctor? Perfect. No sign of pre-flight stress? Nothing that a year and a half vacation will cure. <laughs> well, you won't exactly be on a vacation up there. You'll be quite busy. Of course. However, we'll be quite busy down here, too. Oh, uh, Nick. Remember, don't be over-enthusiastic about picking up too many samples. Weight and fuel might be a problem on the return. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, we'll save the boulders for the next trip. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, I think we have covered everything. Gentlemen, suit up. Only a short time before entry. Well, let's go. We are pretty well covered for any of the ordinary emergencies here. However, you'll be responsible for the, well... For the extraordinary? If it should happen. Mm. Bon voyage. I've seen about 18 months. This will mark the beginning of a journey that will last approximately nine months. Months which hundreds at Mission Control and millions across the nation will wait patiently for words of man's first steps on Mars. In 1958, the United States announced its plans to start a program aimed at manned orbital flight. Now having accomplished that feat, man is reaching past the stars to the distant planet Mars. Mars
Forsman paramedical team reports everything A OK. Ten minutes and counting. All systems go. All systems go. Cabin pressure A OK. Be a bus ride. Extra ordinary. Five minutes and counting. I'll uh, save the boulders for the next trip. Bash just locks the front door and pays the rent for a year. All radio lists, reading loud and clear. Four minutes and counting. Temperature, A-OK. -okay. Three minutes and counting. CK to M1. M1, is communications clear? All communication systems are go. Number three, YGO set. Roger, YGO set. All astronauts secure? Basic, check. Target. Check. Red, check. Two minutes and counting. All personnel will please clear the field. CK to M1, please update computer. Computer reads 51092. Repeat 51092. CK to M1. Computer checks. All systems go. Good luck. Roger. All systems go. 40 seconds and counting. 30 seconds and counting. 20 seconds and counting. This is the last adventure. Wish me luck. T minus 10. 9. We're going to be fine, darling. Just fine. Five, four, three, two, one, zero. Ignition. Cabin pressure. Cabin pressure, 15.1 and dropping.
orbit is achieved. Switch over to manual control. CK from M1, we read you five by five. CK from N1, we read you five by five. Give us cabin pressure. Cabin pressure bubbling off at 6.8. 22 amps. Power is still good. There goes Biko on time. Roger. Understand. Biko. Pitch is 37. Roger. Pitch is 3.7. Repeat. Three, seven. One CPS way in your. Roger. One CPS way in your. You look good. All control systems here are on green. Your booster unit jettison will occur in 60 seconds. Repeat, six zero. Mark, six zero. Booster jettison, do you confirm? CK to M1, we confirm. Beginning booster check. Booster falling away, port side 15 degrees. The light is green. Be good check complete. Roger. Complete. Roger. That's it. This is Cliff, Mike. You're looking good. All you have to do now is relax and enjoy the ride. We read you, Cliff. All right, gentlemen, that's it. Now, the next phase to connect up with our supply ship in about five hours. We'll set the watches now. Don't you take first. Roger. Wake me in four hours. Boy, could I use some shut-eye? I hardly had any sleep at all last night. No kidding, Mike. Pressure in space module operating smoothly. Able to walk about freely and in comfort. Weightlessness, no problem. Control temperature comfortable at 68 degrees. Slight roll and vibration, not interfering with normal movement. And we are about to experience the first meal of our flight. Hey, Nick, wake up Mike, will you? I don't know, it looks pretty peaceful to me. I wouldn't want to miss my right here. Come on, Mike. Come on, away. We on course? On course. Yeah. Well. What's for dinner? Red or green? Yellow.
Nick? What's that? A pastrami sandwich. What does it look like? Where'd you get that? Corner delicatessen. Where else? Seventeen thousand two hundred miles per hour. Altitude? Apogee six hundred miles. Perigee four seven five. Rendezvous point. Forty-three point two zero west. Twenty-two point five zero south. Incidentally, according to my calculations, we'll be over Brazil. Really? All right. <laughs> We have exactly 32 minutes and 28 seconds in which to complete the link up, restart engines, and get on course again. In precisely eight minutes, we begin link up procedure. This is M1. Go ahead, ZK. Supply ship should be in sight, two degrees to port, approximately 1,000 yards ahead and slightly above you. Confirm. We have it in sight. On the button, Cliff. We are proceeding with docking maneuver. We need to accelerate. Distance? 10, 10 yards. Approach angle. Zero, 09.4 degrees and holding steady. Stand by for three second boost for acceleration. In 10 seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. Mark! It's coming up fast, but off the port. Correction? Port. 103 yards and increasing. Mark! Beautiful, beautiful. Dead center. 100 yards, dead ahead and closing. 50 yards and slowing. We're coming in a few feet high. Half a second on the braking thrust. Oh, good. Stand by. Mark! Perfect. Perfect. Hold on. Here it comes. successfully starting rocket motors to continue flight over and out. Next step, Mars, 35 million miles away. Are they still roving? Still roving. 
directly on target. They made a perfect course correction yesterday. According to our computers, they're well on their way to Mars. Well, let me know when they're well on their way home. I will. Excuse me. This is the oddest concoction I've ever seen in my life. Garlic pickles, chocolate ice cream, mangoes, and... It looks revolting, is it? It is. Well, it is not. Where did you find the formula? Under a rock? Something I inherited from my mother. <laughs> I don't understand. I don't get it. Well, you're not supposed to. Mike is. What? <laughs> well, all right. As long as you're both well and happy. Yes, but uh, the point is, are the men? They're fine. Their biggest problem is to keep in shape. That should be no problem for Mike. And Nick's been climbing mountains all his life, one after the other. Well, I sure hope this is the last one. Metaphorically, I don't. He'll be too valuable. For what? Future voyages. He can be director of... No, no, absolutely not. I want him here. You go find yourself another scientist to play with. I want Nick home. Wait a minute. Cliff, nothing can go wrong, can it? I mean... Nothing is going to go wrong, is it? No, of course not. Gentlemen, we are at the halfway mark in our voyage, 115 days. Now, according to instructions, we begin today a series of in-mission rebriefing sessions. Nick, you first. Item. Mars is 35,112,500 miles from Earth at an average speed of 63,000 miles per hour, and the trip should last... The trip should last 230 days, 5 hours, and 15 minutes. 127th day. Item. The circumference of Mars is 13,188 miles to the equator. A Martian day and a length of time for one rotation on its axis is 24 hours, 37 minutes. There are... 686.9 days in a Martian year, which is characterized by the four seasons. 154th day, item. The temperature range in the northern hemisphere is from 15 to 40 degrees daylight, dropping to minus 95 at night. That's in the spring. 175 below in the winter. To avoid freezing, we come in before dark. And keep glycerol injections handy to prevent freezing damage in case of accident. They made four months ago. Buried in space. There were three of them. I only see two of them. Buried in space forever. Well, somebody gets them down. M1 to CK. Take a fix in our position and notify the Soviet embassy. We just sighted two of their astronauts frozen in orbit, along with some debris from their spacecraft. RD facilities. Over and out. Have this into the Russian embassy. Sir, ready control confirms the astronaut Duncan's report of calcium deficiencies. He requests permission to begin environmental conditioning exercises ahead of schedule. What did Dr. Everett say? It'll have no effect on the conditioning from Mars atmosphere and pressure. Permission granted. Have them begin immediately. Yes, sir. 195th day. Item. For millions of years, the surface of Mars has been eroded by violent wind and dust storms with speeds up to 800 miles an hour. Consequently, the surface of the planet is covered with loose dust and sand, chiefly iron oxide. Erosion, however, cannot account for the canals. Geologists believe they are natural fissures or cracks in the planet's surface. Biologists say they're giant fingers of plant life which move with the seasons. 
The other theory is that they are frozen waterways which vaporize in the heat of summer. Afraid of heights. Hmm. Everybody was bugging you. Uh, no, Alice. Like you two guys are test pilots. Me, I'm a geologist. Uh, we need geologists. Yeah, she needed me too. I didn't think she really meant it. Oh. Yeah, well, we all have to make our own decisions. Hey, I'll be all right. Yeah, give me a, uh, give me a laser comma. Sea Cave Man 1, we've just passed through a meteorite shower. Duration about 15 seconds. A number of particles struck the ship, but none pierced the exterior skin. We are proceeding as planned, M1 signing off. miles per hour. Orbit is 342 miles and holding over Mer Erythrium. Our ultimate landing site 400 miles to the northeast. Cheers, Major. Thank you. It's a long way down. The magnification analysis is surface. Check. I'll pitch the nose down and uh, drop our orbit to give you a better look. How far can we go before we need the red roads? About 200 miles. And by... Those pictures, sir. Take it in. Yeah, it's like clear enough. How's it look? Uh, questionable. We better go in as light as possible. I agree. New orbital altitude, one five nine miles. Speed now 8,500. Good day, Blizzard. You're on. M1 to CK. M1 to CK. This is M1. CK calling CK. Come in, CK. This is CK, M1. 
Request permission to disconnect the flagship ship for lighter landing. Surface sand looks steeper than we thought. Over. CK to M1. Permission granted. If you let it go too soon, you'll lose it when you land. Over. Roger, CK. We'll drop it at uh, 2,000 feet. Thanks, sir. Okay. All systems steady. Okay, we're going in. Over. Roger. Understand. Good luck. Stand by. Ready for the sent out to the booster. Activate it. We have vertical attitude. Gyro's responding well. Final acceleration descent booster. One twenty miles and dropping, ten thousand feet per second. And by Twenty thousand feet per second, too fast. By retro. Interior 14.6 pounds per square inch in holding. Exterior pressure 1.2 millibars, 1% oxygen. Temperature 75, interior 10 degrees, exterior. Attitude? Leaning 0.7 degrees to starboard. Not serious. Wind velocity? 3 to 4 miles per hour, no danger. Activate laser comm. You're on. M1 to CK. M1 to CK. Come in, CK. This is CK. Go ahead, M1. Mars 1 made successful landing. 150604 Zulu. Repeat. Mars 1 made successful landing. 150604 Zulu. All is well. All systems holding steady. Over and out. Yes, Cliff. The boys have just landed. When? We just got the report. It's on TV. Goodbye. Oh, thank God. Alice! The boys have landed. 
Moments ago, Mission Control announced that the Mars One space vehicle has successfully landed on Mars. The crew Blazewick, Duncan and Grant are reported to be in excellent condition and in good spirits. We repeat, Mission Control has officially announced that the Mars One vehicle has landed successfully in a history-making flight. We repeat, Mission Control has officially announced that the Mars One has landed on the planet Mars. Your evening? R5, S5. All right. Check out my theme signal. Check. All right. Are you ready? Ready. Let's take a look. in the Arizona desert. You land in the Arizona desert, you'd think there was no life on Earth. Wind erosion and meteoric dust. That'll feel solid enough. Yeah, well, watch out for hidden crevasses. Where'd the ship come down? I think it drifted about two or three miles that way. All right, we'll set markers every 50 yards. Let's go.
scared rushing. It must have frozen instantly in this temperature. It looks like his heating unit failed. We just can't leave him here. Nick, can you get him back to the ship? Yeah. Tell him we found the body of the third Russian astronaut. We've got to get out of the supply ship. Dunk? Supplies haven't been damaged. I'll clear as much as we can before they come back. They? Well, someone burned a hole in this hull and scattered these supplies around. Or something. Let's get back to the ship. Mm. We'll come back with the rest later. some strange signal instead. Maybe it's surface interference. Try it again. Same thing. Pictures of the thing now. Polaroid. That's as good a name as any. Thank you, Baird. Energy from the sun through these. That glow it gives off. 
could be in for red rays. Yes, they said they felt heat as it approached. Probably quite intense. Intense enough to burn severely? Oh, I'd say so, judging from the description of the hole in the supply ship. Anything else? Well, my guess is that this eye probably transmits what it sees and hears. Means it is outer directed. Maybe from some master control on some other planet. Which in turn tells the Polaroid what to do. I don't like it. It may be hostile. We just don't know. Please, we're not taking any calls. I see. Tell Mrs. Blazewick I'll call back. to CK. We read you loud and clear, Cliff. Mike, we're scrapping the mission. Prepare to blast off immediately. Repeat, we're scrapping the mission. Blast off immediately. Request reason. We think the object you described, which we're calling a Polarite, may be transmitting pictures and sound to some master control and receiving orders from it. We won't know until we study it further, but in any case, it is hostile and dangerous. Assume blast off safe. Materialized about 50 yards in front of us. M1 from CK. Mars 1, please acknowledge blast off instructions. We are preparing to blast off. M1 from CK, come in. Mars 1, come in, Mars 1. Mars 1 to CK. We are preparing to blast off. Do you read? Come in, Mars 1, come in, Mars 1. They're not getting this, Mike. Check. CK from Mars 1, CK from Mars 1. We are starting rocket engines. Rocket engines, ignited. Ready to blast off. Come in, CK. Mars 1, we are not receiving. Acknowledge Mars 1. Please acknowledge blast off instructions. Dunk, is the laser comm activated? Check. What's that, Nick? Check, also. No. Check. Here we go. than the thrust of our rocket engines is keeping us up. And jamming our signal to the cape. What do you think it is, Mike? I haven't the faintest idea. There's nothing wrong with the equipment. Our signal just isn't getting through. Why doesn't it do something? You take it easy, take it easy. I want you to take your electronic gear. You go down there and you make a check of that thing. Nick, you cover it. Check.
Start sensor probe analysis. How does it read, Dunk? Spectra shows surface of unknown metallic compound. Leather-like texture. Minimal exterior vibration. Very low density, it might be hollow. Strange. There's a slight electromagnetic pull pulsating between three and four hundred gauss. Radiation level one hundred Rentkin. No openings as far as I can see. Don't check for sound. Right. like some kind of computer. enough details about the ball object. Now here's the procedure. You're going to need extra power for takeoff. Try to get the emergency booster unit from the supply ship. I want you off there as fast as you can make it. Got it, Cliff. Clifford Lawson, please. I must speak to him. It's important. <sighs> Meanwhile, I'm meeting immediately with our technical people to see if we can come up with some positive suggestions to help you. Roger, Cliff. Hello, Cliff. I'm sorry I called, but we're, we're worried. We heard over television that you've lost contact with the boys. We did, but it was a temporary disturbance. We've got it back now. In fact, I just talked with them. Everything is going well. I'm sorry, I don't believe you. There's something gone wrong up there, and you're not, you're not telling us. Edith, I just spoke with Mike. Something's gone wrong with the ship, then. Something's gone wrong. I'm sorry, Edith. I know how anxious you are. But there's, well, there's nothing more I can tell you. I understand. Thank you, Cliff. You said everything is just fine. I don't believe it, not the way they're reporting the news. Oh, and Mike doesn't even know about his baby. Oh, I'm, 
I didn't want him to worry. And now I'm beginning to wonder if I did the right thing. I think you did. He has enough on his mind. What worries me so about Nick is he might do something foolish. He doesn't have to worry about anything but getting the ship back. Oh, you don't know Nick. He's one of the world's great accomplishers. Oh, there's no challenge too great, no mountain too high, and all of that gung-ho stuff. You have no idea how he drove himself to get into this program. I'm just beginning to understand what that drive was all about. Are we going to get past that thing to get the emergency booster unit? Why don't we just shoot it in the eye? Yeah. You saw what happened the last time you shot. How did I know those things would appear and attack? Okay, you didn't. You blame me for what happened to Duke? Oh, but take it easy. Well, are you? Knock it off. How are we going to get past this thing? Hey, Mike. The shadow. Yeah. Yeah, those, those discs, they, they must uh, catch the sun's energy and convert it into solar energy. Yeah. Like a plant does. Yeah. Listen, that, that shadow's from our radar antenna. Let's move it so that it covers the whole thing, see what happens. He's alive. Would you repeat that? I'd be correct. He's alive. That's incredible. Do what you can for him and notify. Okay. Roger. CK from M1. CK from M1. Come in, CK. He can't speak, but he makes low, groan like sounds every now and then. Nick, this is Dr. Craig speaking. He must have frozen instantly. Massage and warm liquids may help. There may be brain damage. Keep him comfortable and in a prone position. Will do, Doctor. Cliff, Mike should be getting back any minute. What about blast off? Kurt Brandt, the astrophysicist, is here with me. His theory is some kind of electromagnetic field is holding you to the surface, probably generated by that ball-like object which gets its power from the sun. What do you suggest we do? We think it will lose its power, and you'll be able to get away if you can hold off until darkness. If we can. Mike, wait! 
CK from M1, CK from M1, come in CK. Mike, we're not getting through. EB, you install, let's get out of here. You all right? I think it's trying to communicate with us. I'm going out there and find out and cover me. I'm feeding That's right. Are you keeping us from taking off? What do you want? and said we should hold out until darkness. No, there isn't a chance of that thing waiting until after the sun sets. Yeah, you're right. Once one of us, and they'll get one of us. You all right, fellow? No. They choose to eat, uh, No. Yeah, no. Good morning, sir, poor Yes. Speak English. Oh, hey. good. Well, we're Americans. Uh, Americanski. No. Uh, get, get it some water. Right. Ball. One ball is big. 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 Take it easy. Take it easy. We're collecting sun's rays. And maybe a disc? Ta. Disc. 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 I don't see any disc out there. Where is the disc? Here's the nutri. Nutri, nutri, nutri. Nutri, nutri. Nutri, nutri. Inside? In the center? Duh. That's center. 
If we destroy this disk, can we take off? No. No. Nick! Nick! Where are you going? I'm going to see that we get back. Just one. <laughs> place where nobody has ever been before. Washington gets this report immediately. I'm deeply sorry, Mike. We all are. It took a lot of courage and devotion. How's the ship? Over. All systems appear to be functioning. Power supply's a little down uh, due to the blast off. But it'll take a little while to replenish itself. I think we better cut this short clip. Over and out. But the reception is good. Over. Yes. Confirmed, over. Good, because I have a surprise for you. Mike? Edith? Edith, is that you? Are you sure you're all right, Mike? I'm fine. 
fine, fine. How are you? Just wonderful, darling. Except... Well, you are all right, aren't you? Yes, yes, of course, darling. Only, I'm going to have a surprise for you when you get back. You have a surprise for me? What? M1 to CK, would you repeat? Please repeat previous message. Over. Edith, the mic one. It's confirmed. Over. What do you suppose she means by that? <laughs> Let's go home. So stop your crying. No more tears. Oh, you're trying. No more.